Hey all. Let's talk about going to California for a few minutes. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll walk through a little bit of a live version of it, the way he would have done it with one guitar. Because if you listen closely on the studio one, uh, there's two guitars. One's doing something very similar to the way he did it live. And one is in just doing little fills. So, so you can hear it go, things like that. You can hear those little embellishments going through it. So that one's in standard with both E's tuned to E. But for the main guitar, the way it would have, would have sounded a lot like this uh, live. So you get into this uh, finger picking thing and it's probably uh, intermediate advanced uh, I guess. It depends on how, how familiar you are with finger picking. Jimmy would have used a, uh, a thumb pick to really dig into those bass notes. Especially on the 77 live ones you can really hear them because he'd go bluesy almost but uh, um, you know before that it was pretty straight and very mellow this is the main picking pattern so you can hear your uh, both E strings down to D double drop D I guess they call it uh, and your thumb is just and then you're doing stuff over the top of that and if you listen closely all those are D's all are D notes D, D, D these are in fact the same notes four D notes in there. You're not playing the, I mean, in a D chord, you'd have the G at the second fret. You even have the A note in there. But you don't play the G string or the A string on those. It's just, these are going like this. And you're just hitting those two over the top of it. It live, he would hammer on the, the high E string at the second fret not necessarily hammering on. Some of them are hammering. Like watch the Live Earl's Court one and he really, he really digs into that on E string. Like that. If you want to do that little So it's the same picking here, and then the top notes you're just going of a D chord. It looks like a D chord, it's not because of the high E's tuned down, but it, you play it like you're playing the Pete Townsend D chord up there. Now slow that down. If you've never done it before, slow it down as slow as you need to do it, and just work on this. This is how he would have done the studio version. There's like a little pause in there. Right there. Live, he started on the top string. And in fact, just like I did, accidentally hit the A string, listen to the live ones, he accidentally hits that A string quite a bit, actually. But it, it's part of the D chord, so it doesn't, doesn't sound out of place or anything. So if you're going to go into the verse, you can climb up two to four on that high E string and then...
This part is high E at 5 and low E at 5. And then the high E goes 5, 4, open. It sounds like he's, well, some people play it like this. But I don't hear that. I, I The vocal does that, but I think he's, I hear. pattern for this part is the same as this. Same strings, same pattern. It's like, uh, take that D one, move it down to G and B at five, high E at three. And then you gotta hit that open, because the bass line goes. picking pattern on this little rip does change. No way around it. Sorry. <laughs> you're on your high, whatever finger you're using, I only use two fingers. Arpeggiate going up. D, A, then A at the second fret. A at the second fret. B at the third. Best part of the song, in my opinion. <laughs> uh. So you're gonna do another verse. I think the only the uh, part where it takes a left turn is uh, uh, so that part I do it as. Same picking pattern as this. So you're not really playing that G string in this chord. Finger it in case you accidentally hit it because it works. But it's like a D7 brought up to here to, what's that? Three, five, seven. This is the seams at the heart of the gods got a punch on this. Uh, suspending the high E string up from seven, eight, seven, eight. seven there but I, I play it down here I'm pretty sure he does it up here an a7 but I do it as that's an a7 without the low bass note in back to the beginning again. G. 
G, back to D. I think there's one more. the outro, you can do a full D chord. So, so on this, between these, you're doing this. Fingering a D chord. So now you are playing that G string. And then you can mess around with it like I'm pretty sure he does in the outro. And with these in between. That's a quick, what is it, 12 and a half minute uh, version to, to sort of get you started. So, uh, before people bombard me with, man, you went way too fast. If you're one of those people, you're totally missing the point of the James James experience. Because somebody, uh, somebody wrote me a note the other day, yesterday. I forget what song it was, but they said, man, uh, Stop showing off and teach. Why, why don't you just teach? Well, because I'm not trying to teach anybody uh, how to play songs the way I play them. I'm, I'm trying to teach you to learn songs the way I learned them, which is very different. Uh, so for, for one, if you're that person or you're thinking like that, stop showing off and teach shut up and go away and don't come back because this channel is not for you and you're not going to get anything out of it. Uh, two, uh, you're not entitled to guitar skills or talent or any of that stuff uh, overnight. You're not entitled to have somebody hand it to you. You're not entitled to my time to give it to you. You're not entitled to anybody's time to get it to you. Uh, you have to put in your own time. That's the way this works. I started playing in 1982. I think it was 1982, eighth grade, you know. Uh, so did I uh, one day wake up and say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna play going to California today in, in 1983. No, I didn't. Uh, I worked up to it. So it took, you know, it took a few years of coming to grips with this, and this for that matter, uh, before I could do that. But, uh, you know, that, that was locking myself in a room a lot like this one. You know, my, my brothers all learned how to uh, how to lay tiled floors and how to fix a car and how to do those things. I didn't learn those things. I was learning this, you know. <laughs> uh, that's the choice I made. Uh, so if, if you want the shortcut, the, the James James channel is not going to be much help to you. Because uh, my, my whole goal is to sort of give you enough t as a starting point and you can shut the door with your guitar, sit down, and then you figure it out. Because that's so much more rewarding for starters, but also too, once you learn those things for yourself, then you're like, well, if I can do uh, going to California, why can't I do I'm One off the Quadrophenia album? Why can't I do uh, uh, April Come She Will, Simon Garfunkel? And the answer is, there's no reason why you can't. You can figure those things out for yourself 
if you just put in a time to get the the mechanics of finger picking, or or if it's eruption, if you get the mechanics of tapping and all that other stuff, or harmonics, that like Tommy Emmanuel does, all those things that I've never done, because I I never wanted to play like Eddie Van Halen, I never wanted to play like Richie Blackmore, I never wanted to play like those guys. <laughs> I wanted to play more like Keith Richards. Uh, you know, that, that I don't have a sophisticated vibrato. My mine is more like Keith or Pete Townsend. They, they don't have any identifiable vibrato. <laughs> That's kind of the way I look at it. Um, but, I mean, if you want Angus Young's vibrato, practice that. If you want Clapton's vibrato or Paul Kossoff's vibrato, sit there and practice that, and, and you can do it. You can do anything you want, as long as you put in the time for it. So, end of lecture. I just got that, you know. I get messages like that one from that guy. I get those all the time. And, and it's people who just don't get it, you know. But uh, I think most people do get it, and the reason they come to my channel instead of somebody else is because they just want to, they have some familiarity with the instrument and uh, want to be able to learn things for themselves and not, not sit down and say, okay, uh, this note is a diminished whatever. I don't know any of that crap. I know nothing about that stuff, <clears throat> any of that theory. I, know the, I don't know the names of this chord. I don't know what that is. <laughs> no idea. But knowing the name of it wouldn't make me... <laughs> Wouldn't make me a better player, in my opinion. <clears throat> Some people probably feel differently. I just want to be able to hear stuff and say, ah, I'd like to try that. Sit down and play it. And after, after a while, you get to that point where you can. So, uh, thus endeth the lesson. Good luck.